So um, I did. I did promise um, that we would talk about uh, because we've been talking about the holidays. Uh, this this very popular movie book, etc., A Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. So I want to share a little bit about that kind of a spiritual um, perspective. Um, you know, it, it, to me, it's an interesting uh, material. Any any book or material that includes what I call archetypes. You know, in other words, they're they're not so one dimensional. When they have archetypes, they start reaching everybody at a deeper level. So, you know, some people say, "Well, a Christmas Carol was a very uh, important political statement somewhere in there, socioeconomic, you know, statements being made," and that's probably true for the time. The deeper significance of that kind of material is really found in the archetypes that are kind of whether they're known by the authors or composers, depending on the case, um, it's, it's really about accessing these archetypes. So I'm going to share some of this with you, if you don't mind. Um, you know, we all know that uh, Ebenezer Scrooge was in on this story, you know, the Bahambad guy, which basically means that's BS, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> bah humbug means that's BS, that's bull, that's... Not true. It, 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 that's what it means. And it gives you a little more of an idea what kind of guy he was. You know, just Merry Christmas, bull. You know, like that's how intense. We think it's kind of cute, but humbug. But it, if you walk down the street and said, hey, happy holidays to somebody, and they said, bull, you know, imagine that. And because that's basically what he was saying. That's how turned off by holidays. And uh, I've known people like that. That when other people are happy, not just holidays, it's like something stirs in them. What can I do to make everybody miserable? <laughs> what can I do to take everybody off of this joyous thing? It's really an interesting thing, but that's, you know, how some people have behaved in this world. In any case, like many of us, why, you know, how did Scrooge become Scrooge? And some of us, you know, spiritual people, it's a story about a, a a guy who's totally different from us, but it, he isn't. Because take away the exaggerated bah humbug, take away the crotchety, the greedy, the selfish. Instead, he's a guy in pain, and that applies to everybody. You know, people don't know because it, there's backstory there uh, about Scrooge. You know, he loses his mother. His father sends him off to boarding school to get rid of him. He misses the sister that he loves. A lot of things happening to this guy. He's abused in the school he's sent off to. So there's a lot going on inside this human being. Um, and, and it's interesting to me because does it, it not only applies to us all, the concept of carrying wounds, but the key is he doesn't work on the wounds. So he's, he's any of us that are wounded, but there's a second level to it. Not only do we carry wounds, we manufacture coping mechanisms. And his became the way he is. He could have been a lot nicer if he had just drank a lot more. <laughs> but then he would have had that issue. You follow? I mean, that's what it is. This is a coping mechanism. So be aware not just of the wounds, which most people don't even bother being aware of. Be aware not just of the wounds. Be aware of what coping mechanisms can do to us. His became, my life is out of control. People die. I'm taken away. I'm abused in this boarding school. This is out of control. I know what I can do. Numbers, 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 numbers. And he starts becoming obsessive compulsive around numbers. He's not just mean. People are not just mean. They're wounded. Now, I'm not giving you the story and the speech about, so, you know, be nice and just, you know, understand that everybody's wounded. We know that. I'm also talking to us to do our best not to take our wounds out on other people, which is what he did. Now, the story, you know, A Christmas Carol doesn't actually, the, the spiritual aspect, supernatural aspect, doesn't just begin with the three visitations, the, you know, ghost of Christmas, past, present, and future. It actually, in a sense, begins when he's first visited by his associate his business partner, Jacob Marley. Now, in a nutshell, Jacob Marley, it's interesting. What you hear is he shows up, scares Scrooge a bit, 
tells him he better change his ways, and uh, Scrooge says no, and he says fine, then there's going to be a visitation with three uh, you know, spirits. What people don't realize, because I, I saw this again the other day, and I went, this is interesting. They don't explain why Marley shows up. Why, why did he show up? I'm just to tell you, you know, and the chains, and the chains, each link wasn't just his own weight of his guilt and shames about his life. In a sense, each link was somebody he ruined. So Marley represents, he, he and Scrooge were business partners, but they ruined people. They thrived on ruining people because, again, Scrooge was so wounded that he decided, I'm going to go into business and this is where I can control the world that used to hurt me, right? But this guy was his partner in this. So the reason, if you think, if you really tune into the, the backstory, Marley had to have been, his friend Jacob, had to have been in that version of hell. In other words, karma or hell, somehow, someway, Jacob Marley had to be told, you know, you're in hell and you have a guy still on the planet that's equal. He's just like you. And if you want to get out of this mess, you should go talk him out of it because if you can help him heal, it'll help you heal, which is, in A Course in Miracles, called a holy relationship. We're in this together. So in that sense, and people don't want to really think about that, but people that have, you know, been involved with your ruining of your life because they helped each other go to hell the way they lived. So this guy's coming back to say, you know what? Let's get out of this mess. I'm, I'm already suffering, and you're going to end up here with me, so I was given a chance to help you heal. And that's what's being asked of you and I. Anybody that was a colleague, even though you wouldn't have called them that, anybody that was your partner in crime, in ruining your life, people that hurt you that badly, ruining your life, they're carrying the chains of what they've done. But you're in hell with them if you still allow the effects of what they've done to keep you down. So how do I get out of this? Well, clearly sending them to hell and then I'm going to be a better person. No, we're in this together. So do remember the importance of compassion, but also forgiveness, which we'll come back to at the end here in a second. So Scrooge refuses this, though we have our visitations. I'm going to share a few quotes from the material, but not the whole story, obviously. But <clears throat> we have our first visitation. He says, I am the ghost of Christmas past. And then Scrooge says, long past? He says, your past. That tells you right there, uh-oh. You know, this isn't a cute story. As soon as you hear that, no, your past. You just go, oh, oh my God, this isn't going to be good. So he says, your past. The things that you will see will, are just shadows of things that have been. People will have no consciousness of us. And we'll be invisible to them. But the way he says that, the things you'll see are shadows of things that have been. I've said this in so many talks. Your past wounds, are still, they still affect us, but they're ghosts. They're shadows. They're not still happening. Most wounds that we've ever experienced are actually not still happening. But why do we live? It's called post-trauma in psychology. But what is post-trauma? If you really get down to the spiritual aspect of it, guys, they're, all they are is shadows and ghosts. They're memories. Even though so-and-so is not still there, I react as though they are. Which means memories by themselves, just ghosts, are having control over me. And those ghosts can be exercised from our life. But not if we're still victims of what their message happens to be. So the spirit says, bear but a touch of my hand. And then he puts it on his heart. And you shall be upheld. And off they fly, right? As the words were spoken, they passed through a wall. And then that's when all the visions start to take place. One of the things he sees was that he was in the prime of his life and sitting with a fair young girl in a black dress in whose eyes there were tears. This is important for us all. Ebenezer asks, why are you crying? This is when he sees the love of his life. Why are you crying? Now listen to this. She says, it matters a little why I'm crying. To you, very little. 
Another idol has displaced me. Another idol, which is funny because, of course, the miracles would use that word for a codependent relationship. Another idol has displaced me. And if your new love can comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, then I have no just cause for grief. What she's saying is what? You have become a business guy. Money has become, gold has become your God. And you don't even have room for love anymore. And she's calling him on this. What idol has displaced you? A golden one. He says, what, what idol has displaced you? How could I have replaced you? you? I love you. She said, no, a golden one. You fear the world too much. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one until the master passion of gain engrosses you. You are changed in nature. And this I would like us all to hear. That once upon a time, guys, we had an innocence and aspirations that were maybe still pure. But a little at a time, new things took precedent. It, 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 for him, it's gold. For you, it could have been memories of abuse that became your idol. I'm not saying you intended it that way. But as soon as something replaced innocence and inspired aspirations, we have new idols, new distractions, if you want to call it that. She says, you're in another atmosphere of life, another hope as its, uh, as its great end. If you were free today, tomorrow, yesterday, can even I believe that you would have chose a dowerless girl? She has no dowry. She's poor. Dude, you're into gold. You're not going to want me at the end of the day. You know, it was convenient. He's in love with her, but she was so easily replaced. Choosing her, do I not know that you regret? Your regret would surely soon follow? If you did pick me, eventually you're going to regret it. I release you with a full heart for the love of him that you once were. That's an amazing statement. Say to the people who hurt you, quietly in your mind, I'm still sending love to the person you really are. Okay? Whoever ever could harm another person, isn't in their right mind. They're not in their God self. So you're never asked to love and forgive the insane person that would choose to be in their ego. Why would God ever say, I want you to love an illusionary, hurtful part of them? It doesn't even exist. But if it did exist, it isn't the God self. It's to be bid farewell. This part. It's amazing that she's able to pull that off and say, you know what, to the, to the person you once were. And I wonder if we can also say that to ourselves. You know, hey, you know, look what you've done. Look, she's talking about gold, but for some of us, it's drugs or it's serial, you know, relationships. Um, whatever the, the thing might be, it's become our distraction. The materialism, the attachments to this world, they become our gold. Can I say to myself, you know what? None of this has ever really worked. It's never really helped. Be that girl in the story talking to the guy. It never really worked. It never brought you happiness. But I will always love that real you. If you ever want to bring that one out again, I'm here. That's the part of me I would like to find again. So this is a bit overwhelming, and that's when Scrooge says, take me from this place. And the, it's kind of interesting because the, the spirit of Christmas past says, I told you these were shadows of things that have been. That they are what they are, so don't blame me. You know, because he's getting upset with the spirit. Now, again, to me, the moral of this story, whether it happened when we're one year old or if we're 50 year old, we always get worn down by this world and by things, not just what people have done to us. We wear ourselves down. We gradually bargain away our better life. And some movies and versions of the story, they depict that a little more accurately, um, that, that he once did have love. You know, he didn't just start off as this guy. And when you really see that early part of the movie or book, and movies can portray it with a little more depth because the book's going to be simpler and shorter in, in text. But when, they, when you see human interactions like in the movie, it really helps to say, wow, this guy, he was in love at one time. But his wounds are what made him become obsessive 
towards money, gold, uh, victory in business and so on. So it, it isn't that just he's a bad guy that forgot that girl. It's actually that his wounds got the best of him. We must not ignore our wounds and we must not ignore that we bargain our own greater life away. What, what he does in the movie to a degree and so on is I'll, I'll definitely, I'll get back to her. I just need a few months to make a little money so that we can have a better life. But he never does. Because when you start bargaining yourself away, it becomes your new, new. It becomes the new pattern. But also, subtly, you also feel guilt and shame for having done it. And that is going to also make you lose sight of yourself. So the spirit of Christmas past is really just showing us our, our think about it, our deepest regrets. Ultimately, the Christmas of, of the past. Christmas, it doesn't mean Christmas. It means the life of the past is really, you know, the one that haunts us. It's the one of regrets. Now, Scrooge then is back in his bedroom. There's no doubt about that, but it and his own adjoining sitting room, they were all lit by a brilliant light that had undergone a surprising transformation. These are, again, some excerpts from the book. Come in, come in, and know me better, man. I'm the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. He's kind of a green man-looking guy, you know. You have never seen the likes of me before. Touch my robe. Scrooge did as he was told, held it fast. The room and its contents vanished instantly, and they stood in the city streets upon a snowy Christmas morning. Now it's Christmas present. Scrooge and the spirit passed on, invisible, straight to the home of Bob Cratchit. On the threshold of the door, the spirit smiled and stopped to bless Cratchit's dwelling with the sparkling of his torch. Sprinklings of his torch. Now, this is where we get to know the, the Cratchit family and all that, Tiny Tim, who was struggling with health issues and all that, and the family sitting down. This is present time, all right? Bob proposed a Merry Christmas to all my dears, God bless, to which all the family echoed, God bless everyone. And then Tiny Tim is the one that added um, the last of all, you know, the, the God bless us everyone, right? That, that famous saying. So despite being... In a financial straits, Cratchit, despite being physically ill, his son, they're willing to say blessings to all. You know, God bless everyone. And uh, Cratchit adds, and we really give thanks this holiday for my boss, Ebenezer Scrooge. And it's the wife who's like, no, <laughs> do not bring that guy's name up in my household, you know. Um, it's kind of funny because there's, there's over a hundred different movies and interpretations of this book that have been put out. But there's one that was made, I think, last year. And um, this was an interesting one, long story short. One of the extra dimensions they put to it was the wife. Um, the reasons for the three visitations was the wife became so angry at Scrooge, she actually put a curse on him and says to him, you know, directly, she says, um, you know what? You're very powerful. You're very hurtful and this and that. And I know you have a lot of money and I know we're broke, she said, but I'm a woman. And women have the ability to call in powers and spirits that you don't know about. <laughs> and it's like, uh-oh, you know. And she said, and I'm calling them forth. And so the result was actually in this one interpretation was her calling this power to be. And it's interesting because at the end of that version of the story, things come to peace at the end, of course, and he's walking out of their house and she walks out and greets him and says, you know, I don't know what's changed in you. And he said, a lot has changed. But he says, thank you for the curse. Thank you for the visitations, you know, that you brought upon me. So th that's, that was a, a very cool version, I think. Anyway, so at the last stroke, ceased to vibrate. He remembered the prediction of Jacob Marley and lifting up his eyes, he beheld the, you know, this next scenario. So Scrooge is going to go with the Christmas past, the Christmas present, the Christmas future. But when he's talking to Christmas present, what's important for us to realize is he's, he's floating about seeing the Cratchits having their party and whatnot. He's then seeing, you know, his, his nephew, which is the nephew because of his sister who he deeply loved. But to me, this is when, this is, those, this is those, those family moments or friends that are continuing to celebrate life where you and I become so wounded, we won't engage. We don't allow good things into our life. Scrooge could have been engaging with these people at their parties. His whole bahumbug attitude pulled him out of that. 
That's narcissism at its best, you know? That's narcissism. It's, it's, but it's also self-hurt. I don't deserve to be in a happy place. You might not know that you're thinking you don't deserve, but that's what's happening. There's a part of, my, part of us that thinks, uh, you know, I don't deserve to be happy. I don't deserve to be in a, a, around good people. So, you know, think about this. This isn't just about others right now. What about you and I? What about love that we reject? New levels of affection, intimacy, uh, trust, vulnerability. You know, no, no, no. People will turn on me. People will. Who's talking right there? Are you really in the present? You're not. You're in the past. When you're letting the past haunt you, you're not in the present. So Scrooge is missing the love in the present because of the hauntings of the past. So Scrooge, you know, obviously, again, he wants to uh, get me out of here, this kind of a situation. He wants to not have to see this. Why? why? I mean, there's nothing horrific going on. So why doesn't he want to see that? Again, because he's also seeing that this is what I'm missing out on. This is what I've done to myself. So this segment of the story tells us about those who are going about their life in the present and leaving us behind in a sense, but that's by our own doing. It's funny because we can be in the same room. He's in the same room with these people, but he's not able to feel what they're feeling. And some versions of the story actually show us that he's gradually, in the one I just described that was made last year, one of the spirits points out to him, you're already changing. Because a little with each of these visitations, every insight, he's, he's resisting it at first, but he's gradually waking up. So you don't need to expect instantaneous awakenings in your life or the people around you. The constant delivery of good messages that we integrate, is, that's enough to help us change our lives. So, so we go into the uh, final, obviously, um, Christmas, you know, ghost spirit of the Christmas uh, future. And this is where we have, um, they're lifting, lifting up their eyes and they beheld, he beheld uh, a single, again, solemn phantom this time. This is the one with the, only the hand is visible. The phantom slowly, gravely, silently approached, came near him, Scrooge bent down upon his knee, for in the air through which the spirit moved, it seemed to scatter gloom and mystery. Now, why? Why would the spirit of the future have gloom and mystery. Why is he so dark? It's like Mr. Death, right? It was shrouded in a deep garment, canceled, which can, concealed its head and face and form, only the hand visible. I am the presence, I am in the presence, Scrooge says, of the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Ghost of the future. I fear you more than any other specter I've seen. But as I know your purpose is to do me good, as and I hope, uh, as I hope to live, to be another man, a better man from what I was, I am prepared to bear your company. So let's do it with a thankful heart. So he's already changing, which I think some movies haven't shown you. Will you not speak to me? And it gave him no reply, only the pointing of the hand. Lead on then, lead on. The night is waning fast and it's precious time to me. I know, lead on spirit. They scarcely seem to enter the city and the city uh, rather seems to spring up about them. The spirit stopped beside one little group of businessmen observing that the hand was pointing to them, meaning, Scrooge, I want you to listen in on this conversation that these businessmen are having. Now, it, you, you guys know the story, but at the end of the day, this, the, the men are talking about, you know, this guy died. Who is he? Who, do, who died? And they hate the guy. And they're talking about how greedy he was. And they're laughing at the fact that he died. The spirit also aims, you know, over at the Cratchit family and shows that, you know, here's the future that's coming. Just like the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Look at and learn from the things you've done in your life have changed you. They have affected the world and the people around you. So Scrooge is seeing people don't like you. But this is, this is bringing up very deep lessons for us all. So he sees the Cratchit family in mourning. Tiny Tim, the child, had died. And this is really hitting him even more, you know, deeply. This has nothing to do with me. He was already sick. It has everything to do with you. So why is Scrooge so afraid of this particular spirit? For a couple of reasons. One, 
The greatest fear, they say, in the average human being is the fear of death. Why? Because deep down inside, we think we're imperfect and we're going to pay for it. Deep down inside, there's a heavy energy that we project onto God, you know, and Mr. Death and whatever represents death. We also fear ridicule. And so when, when he knows this guy's bringing him all this, and when he sees it happening, it's really, really breaking Scrooge down. So at this point, you know, so much doom. The decisions you've made in your past have destroyed your present. And now if that's the trend, one plus one equals two, right? Pa horrible past, not such a great present. It's going to result in a bad future. So Scrooge and you and I are already suspecting our future might not be so good. But it's only because we associate ourselves with the shames and regrets of our past that have destroyed the present. So the math is simple. We think our future is not going to be good. So Scrooge is really facing his own demons in all of this. Right? It's just the math. I haven't done well. This is what I might expect. So... You know, to me, this is, um, you know, just very, just very deep stuff because people talk about concepts like heaven and hell. But in reality, Scrooge's visitations to, through all these spirits is really a visitation through the chakras. He goes and visits Marley, visits him, actually, but he's dealing and visiting with Marley. That's the root chakra. Marley represented greed, root chakra, money. So when he deals with the fears and the chains, the weight of everything, that's Scrooge or you and I going into our root chakra, which I would suggest doing. Look into each chakra and see how you, you know, how things weigh out. Because if you don't, the universe will do it to you or for you. If we don't do self-inventory, it's going to be brought about the hard way. Scrooge never had to go through any of these visitations. That was not fate. Fate is that we're all going to become holy children of God. That's the only real fate in this universe. And that's a good fate. But instead, because he didn't learn the easy way by saying, you know, wow, it could have been anything. It could have been a snowflake landing on his head that suddenly made that human being or you and I go, God, there's such a purity in the snow, you know? Wow, and... Maybe we all have a bit of that in us. Which do I like more? Snow with all the dirt and mud that's been destroyed or the pure kind of blanket that comes to the earth? I like that one, I think. Then why do I want to be the muddy one? You know, just anything that would awaken these concepts in us. Could have been the easy way. Could have been just sitting there and, you know, instead of an apple on his head, like, well, you know, one great mystic, it could have been a snowflake. And he could have went, oh my God. What have I been thinking and doing? Let me change my life. No, instead, ooh, you know, it's got to be all this horrible chains rattling. and That's just learning the hard way. But he looks, he meets with Marley, and he basically goes into his root chakra, which is to some degree ruled by, uh, you know, hell. It's, it's our lower chakra is like going down to the depths of hell. When he meets with the ghost of the past regrets, that's his emotional chakra. When he goes and meets with the ghost of present, that's the intellectual chakra. When he goes into meeting with the ghost of the future, that's our heart chakra, because that's where we hold our greatest dreams and visions and receive dreams and inspirations from God. So you see what I'm saying there, guys? As soon as you realize it's not just three spirits, there's four. You realize it must be the four chakras. That's archetypal. Then it becomes something that's applicable to us all. It's not just an interesting or cute or creative Christmas story. Somebody was accessing all the parts of us, puts it into a story. Everybody seems to like the story, but it's because we knew consciously and unconsciously it's talking about us. The closing of the story is as follows. This is, of course, where he's back in his room. 
you know, goes to his, it's his bed, his room, his linens. Wow, okay, I'm here. But he doesn't just go, whew, thank God, that was all a, you know, a dream. Now I can go back to being a jerk, which is what some people will do. It's what they will do. And instead, he's relieved. He realizes this did happen, and I am getting that new choice that I asked the spirits to give me. New chance. So he goes to his window, you know, hey, lad, you know, hello, mister, you know, is there turkey? You know, and, you know the rest of that story. So he hears the, the, the church bells. He knows he's, you know, home and he has a new chance. Checks, what day is it? Christmas day. Oh, that's the upper three chakras, guys. The whole Ebenezer Scrooge story, a Christmas carol could have been subtitled The Dark Night of the Soul because that's what it is. It was a dark night of his soul. What's the point of the dark night? Oh, just to stay miserably in the dark. No, it's to reach the light at the end of the tunnel. And he did. Everybody will eventually. But some people are going to take lifetimes to get there. They want to stay wounded, miserable, and or wounding. You know, they're sometimes the type of people that want to cause wounding. So we all know Scrooge, you know, dresses up all his best, goes out into the streets. He's wishing people a Merry Christmas. He's totally different. He's also remembering people are saying, good morning and Merry Christmas to you, sir. You know, people that he passed by that he didn't know or recognize. And he's, he's thinking to himself, God, this is so weird. I used to reply. That's BS. You know, and he's kind of laughing at himself for that. So, as you know, he goes towards his nephew's house and he makes things right with them. He ends up going to Cratchit's house and making things right with them. Does, you know, he first he meets with them at the office and I'm going to give you a raise and all that. And, you know, and, and the story ends by saying Scrooge was, you know, better than even his word. He went above and beyond. Now, this is what's important to me about this whole story as an overall story. Would you have been okay if he would have just woken up and in the dream vision that he had, he learned that, you know, he should have dealt with his wounds and um, eased his regrets. So if it would have ended there, but you didn't hear anything about his new life, would that have been enough? And I would say no. You know why? Because in his dream visions, he apologized to the spirits. Listen to this. I'm sorry for what I've done. It wasn't until he walked outside and did differently that he made amends. Apologies are worthless without making amends. When I say they're worthless, I mean they're not complete. They're something. So remember that. This story, besides Dark Night of the Soul, this story is also about the necessity of apology and amends. Right? You came into a new life and you did differently. I'm not going to be as afraid to hug. I'm not going to be as afraid to give. And it doesn't matter. Like I do my best to, to give, you know, and, and all the time, you know, if I have extra funds, I made some money at a workshop, I take a portion and give. I'm flying around the world for all these years that I've been doing that. And whenever I was flying up, I never thought, you know, wow, yeah made a ton of money on tour, you know, can't wait to go home and put it in a box. You know, what would be the point? As soon as I go to the airport, the little trolley that takes you, you know, from one place to another, tip them. You know, people are just throwing their luggage at these, you know, guys and gals and the, driving the buses. You know, nobody cares. I tip them. And then the sky cap and I tip them. Why? Because I came to your town and made some income. Thank you. Keep sharing, you know, just trust. Now, it doesn't mean that I did $10, $20 all of my life. No, it's when I had 10 or 20. The first time I remember doing extra was in my early 20s where I would go and get fuel. I lived for a couple of years in Oregon, which is part of my Christmas past, let me tell you. But anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I lived in Oregon and um, they it was mandatory that they fuel your car. You're not allowed to get out and fuel it. I don't know if that's still true, but that's how it was. Okay, it still is? Still? Now, I pull up, they fuel up the car. I would tip the guy. Now, I, you know, I would put, you know, I have $20, 16 in gas and give the guy four bucks. Nobody tips the guy. It's his job. But I still did it. 
because I had it. Okay? And I mean, I was living to the day, day to day, like many, you know, living day to day. And it would get to the point where I'd go, wow, you know, I'm down to like $10. And I was a dad at the time, I had a couple of kids. I'd say, hey, get, get kids, let's go. We'd, we'd go to the same place every week or whatever it happened to have been. Every week at the end of the week, I'd go to the same place, buy a, a couple of slices of cheesecake, one for me, one for them to all share. And uh, <laughs> delicious, delicious cheesecake, man. But it became our ritual. But some people would go, why would you go and spend your last 10? Because I was doing my best to not believe it was my last 10. If it's your last 10, you're going to sit there and worship the damn thing. You're going to just you know, hold it and clench it like it's your God. I got to watch out. You know, got to make sure that, that that doesn't go away. You're shutting off the world. You're shutting off the universe. You're shutting off the flow. You're just sitting there holding that 10. The way my mind works is I would have been kind of embarrassed to have been so faithless. That's how my mind worked. That doesn't mean it always went perfectly well. Sometimes I would spend it, an extra day would go by before I get an extra dollar and I would feel the fear like anybody. But what are we doing differently, guys? It's, it's give what you can afford to give, even if it's a smile. And behind masks, what are you going to do? Smile. They can't tell. So you know what you do? You wave and let them know that you're smiling with your hand. Hi. You know, good to see you. It still can be done. Or behind that mask, you just squint your eyes and they'll think that's smiling because that's usually what you do when you smile. <laughs> just, you know, walk around making people think. Anyway, um, to me, I, I love this concept to... Consider making all the appropriate changes you can in your life. And sometimes that's, you know, with your kids. Hey, listen, you know. And you don't, you don't have to do some big confessional thing. It, it could be stealthy, you know. It could be like your kid says, oh, you know, I have my, my child and we did this and it was so fun. God, I just love hearing what a great parent you've become. This is my beginning, you know. And I, I wish I was more like you when I was younger. See, instead of just, oh, I was terrible. Even if it were true, you're reinforcing it in their mind and that's not helpful. Turn it around by telling them how much you appreciate positives you see in them and how you would wish you, by my saying I wish I'd have been more like that, what I'm saying is, and I sometimes feel like I wasn't. Find your stealthy way to apologize and make amends. And now what can I do? You know, do you, do you want somebody to watch the kids this weekend or whatever it happens to be? Always staying within your parameters of self-worth. You know, never expend where, beyond what you can do because that's called rescuing. Then you're trying to overcompensate. That's what Scrooge and Marley did with money. Their lives were out of control. They found something they're great at and something they can thrive at. And in fact, subconsciously, they're trying to get revenge on the world that hurt them by hurting everybody else. Oops, my bad. Please forgive me. Thank you. You know, the Ho'oponopono prayer. So it's like, how can, I, how can I change this? Apologize and make amends. How you can, where you can. People don't have to know. You don't have to say, hi, listen, ma'am, can I uh, give you $5? Because, you know, about 35 years ago, one time with my kids, uh, you... you that's selfish again, believe it or not, because you're still talking about you. Talk about the miracle that you can bring to people. Here's what you're subtly doing when you make amends. Yes, you're part, at first when you're learning to make amends, yes, you know, to a degree you're doing penance and you're, you know, that's clearly there. But it eventually will shift to where you recognize all you're really doing is manifesting miracles. When I say, can I pay that $10 for you, you know, what I'm saying to you is not because I have to make up for. That's maybe where you start, maybe. But what you're eventually doing is, can I pay that? Why? Because you're worth it. That's what you're ultimately needing to convey to the people of this planet. You have value beyond measure. You have value beyond anything you could ever think you have value with. You know? You're beyond that. You have value. 
Why would you? I don't even know you. Why? Do I need to know you? I don't get preachy. I don't say, you know, uh, I'm giving this to you because God, Christian, Buddha. I, I don't go anywhere with that stuff. Telling people that they have value is the most Christian, Buddhist, Muslim, etc. thing you could do. Make sense? Just reminding people they have value. Because when you do, you're subtly also saying you have value because why? Because of who you are. Who are you? A holy child of God. See, I didn't have to dress that in any religion. You just have value because of what you are. And what you are is enough. So keep it in mind as we're going to share in a meditation for five minutes or so a bit of these visitations for ourselves. So if you don't mind, please center quietly inside. setting aside all stuff of the mind and thinking. Let's do our own version of a Christmas carol. So let's just imagine for a moment that we're deeply asleep in bed. Really cool night. Everything's going introspective, introverted. Everything's going into a deep place. Not the warm version of a Christmas night, but it's starting to become cold. We're in a deep place in our bed and into a deep, deep, deep sleep. We'll spend just less than a minute on each of the visitations. So imagine being awakened by the rattling chains of someone you believe has been most instrumental in ruining your life or derailing your life. It doesn't matter. They're right. It's right or wrong. Just if they come to mind, work with that person. They're there rattling those chains. Take a moment to realize that you and that person are likely still bound to each other karmically, but are awaiting release, maybe today. But just allow that and see how you feel about that. Face it courageously. Don't, you know, just see it and own it. Don't deny or minimize. Just who would be your Jacob Marley? Because on some deep spiritual level, they're coming to you to say, the interactions we've had, whether I did to you, you did to me, we did to each other, the interactions we had are in, imprisoning me. And if they're imprisoning me, they're also imprisoning you because we have a bond, like it or not. And there's a win-win scenario we can experience, and it starts with this. Very simple. What, despite what happened, what can I learn from my interactions with that person? Just ask and receive an answer. Don't go further, just what can I have learned? Could I have learned or can I learn now from that experience? It could be I need to care for myself more, I need to be more loving, I could be a better parent, whatever it happens to be. What can I learn? Don't fix it per se, just what can I learn? Then let it be. Breathe in not the memories of the hurt, Breathe in what you can learn. It puts you back into a place of true power. And then let it fade. Next, imagine being visited by the spirit of Christmas past. What image does this spirit take? Everybody could be different. So here comes the Ghost of Christmas past, a, a, an image. It could be a person or it could be more imagery. What for you does the Christmas past look like? Doesn't matter what it looks like, just see it. 
take note of what it looks like. Because somehow it has some symbolic you know, pieces for you. The past. Our memories, our regrets, images the most regrettable, you know, images of the most regrettable moments in our life and times when you committed an act that you regretted. What does that spirit look like? And what memories does it show you? Just allow a couple. It's all for good purpose. Don't worry about this seemingly, you know, dark experience. Just take an inventory of what it is in your life that got chipped away at and never ended up the way you wanted it to be. In Scrooge's experience, love lost, obsessions fed. What part of your life got chipped away at? Again, face it courageously. Just see it and own it. Ask what you can learn from it. It might be Christmas past, but it's not too late. What can you learn from it? Don't fix it. Let it be. And let it fade. Next, imagine being visited by the spirit of Christmas present. Once again, what do they look like? Take note. This is going to be the image that's going to show you, the spirit that's going to show you. It's like a shamanic journey. Show you things that like relationships that have gone sour. but in your present life. Look especially at the image of anyone who you can imagine that dislikes you. Scrooge saw people talking about him. He saw the angry wife in Cratchit's house. He saw the businessmen. He saw people in the city, you know, and he knew people were not liking him. His nephew, who I, he knew loved him, was still making fun of him to some degree. And what would people be saying about you that's not so flattering? Look at anyone who may have ever asked you for love and assistance and you declined. It doesn't matter your reasons. If someone's coming to mind, it's probably not healed. Face it courageously. See it and own it and ask again, what can you learn from this particular visitation? Don't fix it. Let it be. Let it fade. Next, imagine being visited by the spirit of Christmas future. What do they look like? Take note. For Scrooge, it was a dark figure because of his fear. All the past hurts will come back to him in the future. So clearly it was a scary character because he was afraid of his future and of death. So in this vision, allow the Spirit to show you anything unseemly that others might say about you if you recently died. Is there anybody that would be happy that you died? It's possible. It doesn't mean you're bad. But just check it out. We know you would have loved ones gathered around your grave if we had a grave and say nice things, think nice things, pray nice things. But when they, they all left, is there anybody 
if you imagined an enemy that would walk up and say, and here's what I think, and say nasty things. Also, just look at your overall feelings about death and see if any fears arise about death. Whether it's what people would say or where you're going. Face it courageously. See it, own it. Ask what you can learn from it. Don't fix it. Just let it be and let it fade. What can you learn from it? and let it fade. Now, we didn't fix any of it, but let's look back again. What did I learn from? A person that was most associated with being a partner in crime and ruining my life, or derailing me. What did I learn? What can I learn from the overall vision of the past? the present, that I'm not quite where I would like to be in the present and the future, my fears of what might be the result of all my hurts in this life. Hmm. To myself and to everyone involved, I'm sorry to myself and everybody involved, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I even signed a contract that would pull us all into this crazy behavior. Karmic or otherwise, I'm sorry. The truth is, I love you. Which is also including myself. I'm so sorry. I love you. Please forgive me doesn't mean that you might not. Please forgive me means, and so it is. Please forgive me to myself, to others, everybody involved in all the visions I just saw and the ones I didn't see. This life and any other life. Known and unknown wounds. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I love you. And although I say thank you, it doesn't end. Now I come out and it's Christmas Day. It's not too late. So we close with what vows can you make about your new life? How from all the lessons learned and the shifting inside our heart of forgiveness, where do I go from here? Make some sort of commitment to yourself and others on how you'll be different. You can still slip and make mistakes. In what way can you become not Scrooge Ebenezer? Endearingly, Ebby, his sister would call him. What does that part of you do? The one that can't stop from smiling because you have a secret, a beautiful secret that you saw hell and came out of it and it's like, now I reach the light at the end of the tunnel. I can't give away enough to let people know how much I am the presence of love. So there was the spirit of my friend, Christmas past, present, and future, but there's another spirit, the presence of God now. It's not supposed to just end with the Christmas future. Now it's the Christmas spirit of God. Christmas, which means the Mass, the celebration of Christ and the birth of Christ in me. I am the living Christ on earth. I am vowing and I'll try to get it in my journal to remind me every day. I'll put it on a sticker to put on my bathroom mirror when I go through there and see that I am the living Christ. I am here to make a difference. Merry Christmas to everyone. 
peace and goodwill to mankind. I'm not here to argue politics, science, or religion. I'm here to be the presence of God. And the presence of God is the presence of love. How can I be loving today? How can I serve you today? We don't literally say it to everybody. It's in our minds. It's in our hearts. How can I serve? Because I'm so full. And there are days when I'm not. So I need to serve myself. Warm baths, comfort, favorite little drink, and so on. You know, like your hot chocolates or whatever it happens to be, tea, just something to warm your insides. But taking care of self, saying no to addictions. Man. If you're going to have any addiction, let it be one called being good. And then the other ones will tend to fall away because I'm so joyfully focused on being wonderful, which means full of wonder. Make a difference as best you can. Make this the new normal. Make this your, your healthy new habit, for lack of a better word. This is my new self. At the end of every day, I should be able to count on more than one finger, even. I should be able to count, did I bless anyone today? Did I improve anybody's life today? And when you get used to being able to count on more than one hand, that's really cool. Two hands. When you have to start counting on your toes, you've done really well. This is my new life. Right? All else, bah humbug. My new normal is to be the presence of God. However, I can do that. And remember, when you're not in the mood to, please... Bring it to yourself. You deserve it. So that you can fill up again all your reserves so you can go out to the world and do the work again. Take a moment, just deep gratitude, a couple of breaths, a few breaths of, yes, I believe this. Yes, I got it. I may not have even liked the images of people from the past that came up. What does that matter? I've already surrendered them to a new level. Learned what I could from that and said, I love you, bless you, bye-bye. Focus on where you're going as a new person, not where you've been. There'll be plenty of time to have to still go back and do some of the healing on where you've been. Right now, it's Christmas. God bless us, everyone. And so it is. Thank you all so much. Take a moment to reintegrate, and we're going to do our closing song. And um, happy holidays to you. Let the holidays last through New Year's for sure. My Christmas tree and lights will be on for like a month. <laughs> Yeah, they will. I mean, that's me. I mean, just like milk it, you know, all those beautiful lights. Let them shimmer in your, you know, your rooftop, wherever you have them or your Christmas tree. And you know what? If, if you want a, a, and don't, can't afford one strand of lights that you could put around your fireplace, come to Unity and, you know, tell Joan to buy you some lights. No, um, <laughs> we've got some spare lights, white or color. Take one as a gift, but don't believe you don't have and can't get and so on. That's not the real you. Find that real you. Ask for help. One day you'll have asked and received so much you'll afford to be able to be one of the ones giving to other people asking. Okay? Whether that's as a sponsor in a program or whether it's as a counselor, a chaplain, or just a great human being. Those are miracle workers. We're going to take up our collection, do our prayer, and do our closing prayer. Please be as generous as you can be. <clears throat> Chaplains, those of you guys, you know, helping us with collections, I really appreciate you doing it. Okay? I really do. And 
And I say I, all of us. We appreciate that. Uh, because it's beautiful to see people dedicated to anything good. It really is. It's easy for people to dedicate to hurtfulness because that's what hurt brings. But when we can break that spell and break that trance and find ways to dedicate to something better, something that symbolizes God, and that is anything that's good, being of service, being kind, you know, letting people, you know, cut into line when, when they seem to be in a hurry or stressed, just to be helpful in every way we can be. And we're capable of far more than we give ourselves credit for. We really are, but we're getting it. We learn to expand and be more and more helpful. Our prosperity prayer, it's on the front of your bulletins and it's posted online. Be as generous as you can be, guys. The donations in the ba baskets are uh, they're extra donations of any kind that we can use for special projects. But the baskets are your usual donations and we appreciate it. And um, we had at least one person give a, a bit, you know, substantial extra donation last week. And can't tell you how much that helped. It helped us catch up on some of the bills. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing, this, what we're doing. Most churches shut down, you know, and here we are. You're being respectful, social distancing and all that. People from all over the world are watching because what they thought was their, their you know, to, to be able to learn and so on, their resource, it, it shut the doors on them and the world keeps doing that. But here we are, right? We're saying, you know what? If bars can be open, so can we. <laughs> you know, I mean, give me a break. You, you're kidding me, right? Um, it's just ridiculous, some of these things. But God bless everyone. God bless everyone. Whether they own bars, restaurants, God bless everyone. And we hold the vision that we're all bouncing back into a new life. All that we've gone through in 2020 is nothing but the dark night of the soul for everyone, the nation, and the world. And all it has been is a Christmas carol. But at the end, we have to come out and wish everybody well. So let's bring a new life at Christmas to everybody. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you. While they're passing the baskets and bags around and folks are clicking on the button to, to make donation, can anyone share what did you learn or hear today that makes the most difference for you and that might make a difference in your life or the people around you? Yes, sir. All right, there's one line um, in the movie that the ghost of Christmas present greets Scrooge. Come and know me better, man. Yeah. What that means for me is that sets a still small voice within myself. For me... Right. Nice. To know my individualized expression of God, which is also the duality of to come and know God. Yeah, beautiful. Come and know me better, man. See, so he, he looked for a deeper significance or symbolic meaning. In the Christmas, ghost spirit of Christmas present, in the, in the story, he says to Ebenezer Scrooge, come and get to know me better, right? And what he did, what Jeff did, is he turned it around and saw that as a, a voice of God inside of him, calling him to get to know that better. Anyone else? Yes. It's not enough just to say you're sorry and apologize. You need to make amends. <laughs> yep. It's not complete. The movie, if it would have ended with him going, spirits, I'm sorry, ending. It would have been nice. It would have been good. It, it's a different movie when he went out and made a difference. Amends, not just apologies. I've had a few friends where they've said, fine, you know, I'm sorry about such and such. Now, I don't need, almost never in my life, did I feel like I needed an apology or amends. If you feel it, thank God, you're bouncing back and we're good. See, I kind of have no problem. But I've seen a few friends where I knew that I was going to test them and take it a little further. Well, fine, I'm really sorry. Okay, how can we clear it up and make this right? Well, what do you mean? I'm not going to do anything differently. Ah, see, where the amends part became my way of mirroring to them. It's not that I actually needed amends, you know, but it was nice. The amends part, I could see them just shrivel up 
in anger or fear or whatever it was, when, thank you for the words, where's the action? Who else had their hand up? Yes. Yeah, we, um, if I can make a recommendation for a, a, a version of Scrooge, we actually, we don't have a television, but it's available on the internet, on a YouTube. It was made in around 2000. It had Joel Gray playing um, uh, the, the Ghost of Christmas Past and Patrick, what's his name? The, 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 yeah, Patrick Stewart, that's right, playing, um, playing yeah. Scrooge. A really, really good version. Yeah, very well acted it's a great version. It's on YouTube. Yeah, Patrick Stewart playing Scrooge, yes. Yeah. Again, there are several versions. And um, and I also think yeah. it's interesting that, that I don't know if the people realize, the story is, is only a short story. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. You know, people think it's a whole book, the Christmas right. card. It's just a, a tiny yeah. story. That it can be read in a couple of hours at yeah. the most, I mean, yeah. honestly. Yeah. yeah. Yes? Yeah, the irony is we saw the new version, too, the other day. And, and at the end of it, Caroline and I were talking about, this sounds like a unity. <laughs> is it the one I was describing yeah. was it oh man that came on and it was Christmas Day was the first time I've seen that and I thought this is interesting you know I'm like going wow and I'm going this is like I don't I'm not there's not a lot of people that around me that we came into this here but I go home and I'm still alone and I'm still in my home and that comes on and I thought it, you know it's kind of the blurb on it was like darker version, the one where the woman curses him. And I thought, this is going to be a little weirder, darker. And I thought, no. But somehow, after the first few seconds, I sat back and went, I'm going somewhere today. You see? Like, I'm alone, you know? Well, I'm going to go somewhere. So I sat back and went on that journey. And I, and I literally exclaimed, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, a couple times, like, oh, this is, uh-oh. Like, I knew this was going into some deep stuff. And it did. And I could just feel it. I, could, I mean, it was weird. I could just feel it in advance. And it was very, very cool. Glad you saw that. And you, you caught on with what I was saying when she told him that, right? Yeah, yeah, very cool. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, one more. I just want to say I really liked how you correlated the chakras to the story. The chakras to the story, the correlation. Thank you for seeing that and digging that. I appreciate that. How, but watch for that in life. Watch for the deeper messages to things, right? The deeper significance. So I, I'm going to close with what, what I was saying to the Lord during our meeting. We took time to acknowledge each other one at a time around, you know, just acknowledging things we've ad admired or appreciated in each other. But I also extended that to, to unity of Sedona, you know, and, and what Tom had said was uh, he's watching that, that really deeper um, darker version of, in a good way, uh, of the Scrooge. It's called FX's A Christmas Carol. So that station funded it and put. So FX, the station, it's FX's um, A Christmas Carol. There's the name. So, you know, to me, um, I'm just going, wow, you know, there's just like so much that we've accomplished, I was saying to the board, that, that while people are going into so many strange places over this last year, I was saying to them, we're still happening. And what Tom had said was listening to that closing of that movie sounded like a sermon or a talk at unity of Sedona. And that's a great connection to make. And what we experience, I was saying to them, guys, look at this. We just keep, there's so much light and it's not just this. I mean, people around the planet are joining us in this. So I'm very, very appreciative of board members and the work they're constantly doing to kind of, you know, carry this, the members, the chaplains, all of our systems. But uh, while the... So keep it in mind as we're going to share in a meditation for five minutes or so a bit of these visitations for ourselves. So if you don't mind, please center quietly inside. setting aside all stuff of the mind and thinking. Let's do our own version of A Christmas Carol. So let's just imagine for a moment that we're deeply asleep in bed. 
really cool night. Everything's going introspective, introverted. Everything's going into a deep place. Not the warm version of a Christmas night, but it's starting to become cold. We're in a deep place in our bed and into a deep, deep, deep sleep. We'll spend just less than a minute on each of the visitations. So imagine being awakened by the rattling chains of someone you believe has been most instrumental in ruining your life or derailing your life. It doesn't matter. They're right. It's right or wrong. Just if they come to mind, work with that person. They're there rattling those chains. Take a moment to realize that you and that person are likely still bound to each other karmically, but are awaiting release, maybe today. But just allow that and see how you feel about that. Face it courageously. Don't, you know, just see it and own it. Don't deny or minimize. Just who would be your Jacob Marley? Because on some deep spiritual level, they're coming to you to say, the interactions we've had, whether I did to you, you did to me, we did to each other, the interactions we had are in, imprisoning me. And if they're imprisoning me, they're also imprisoning you because we have a bond, like it or not. And there's a win-win scenario we can experience, and it starts with this. Very simple. What, despite what happened, what can I learn from my interactions with that person? Just ask and receive an answer. Don't go further, just what can I have learned? Could I have learned or can I learn now from that experience? It could be I need to care for myself more, I need to be more loving, I could be a better parent, whatever it happens to be. What can I learn? Don't fix it per se, just what can I learn? Then let it be. Breathe in not the memories of the hurt, Breathe in what you can learn. It puts you back into a place of true power. And then let it fade. Next, imagine being visited by the spirit of Christmas past. What image does this spirit take? Everybody could be different. So here comes the Ghost of Christmas past, a, a, an image. It could be a person or it could be more imagery. What for you does the Christmas past look like? Doesn't matter what it looks like, just see it. Take note of what it looks like because somehow it has some symbolic you know, pieces for you. The past our memories, our regrets, images the most regrettable, you know, images of the most regrettable moments in our life and times when you committed an act that you regretted. What does that spirit look like? And what memories does it show you? Just allow a couple. It's all for good purpose. Don't worry about this seemingly, you know, dark experience, just take an inventory of what it is in your life that got chipped away at and never ended up the way you wanted it to be. In Scrooge's experience, love lost, obsessions fed. What part of your life got chipped away at? Again, face it courageously. Just see it and own it. Ask what you can learn from it. It might be Christmas past, but it's not too late. What can you learn from it?
Don't fix it. Let it be and let it fade. Next, imagine being visited by the spirit of Christmas present. Once again, what do they look like? Take note. This is going to be the image that's going to show you, the spirit that's going to show you. It's like a shamanic journey. Show you things that like relationships that have gone sour. But in your present life, Look especially at the image of anyone who you can imagine that dislikes you. Scrooge saw people talking about him. He saw the angry wife in Cratchit's house. He saw the businessmen. He saw people in the city, you know, and he knew people were not liking him. His nephew, who I, he knew loved him, was still making fun of him to some degree. And what would people be saying about you that's not so flattering? Look at anyone who may have ever asked you for love and assistance and you declined. It doesn't matter your reasons. If someone's coming to mind, it's probably not healed. Face it courageously. See it and own it and ask again, what can you learn from this particular visitation? Don't fix it. Let it be. Let it fade. Next, imagine being visited by the spirit of Christmas future. What do they look like? Take note. For Scrooge, it was a dark figure because of his fear. All the past hurts will come back to him in the future. So clearly it was a scary character because he was afraid of his future and of death. So in this vision, allow the Spirit to show you anything unseemly that others might say about you if you recently died. Is there anybody that would be happy that you died? It's possible. It doesn't mean you're bad. But just check it out. We know you would have loved ones gathered around your grave if we had a grave and say nice things, think nice things, pray nice things. But when they, they all left, is there anybody, if you imagined an enemy that would walk up and say, and here's what I think, and say nasty things. Also, just look at your overall feelings about death and see if any fears arise about death. Whether it's what people would say, or where you're going. Face it courageously. See it, own it. Ask what you can learn from it. Don't fix it, just let it be and let it fade. What can you learn from it? And let it fade. Now we didn't fix any of it, but let's look back again. What did I learn from? A person that was most associated with being a partner in crime in ruining my life, or derailing me. What did I learn? What can I learn from the overall vision of the past, the present, that I'm not quite where I would like to be in the present? 
and the future, my fears of what might be the result of all my hurts in this life. To myself and to everyone involved, I'm sorry. To myself and everybody involved, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I even signed a contract that would pull us all into this crazy behavior. Karmic or otherwise, I'm sorry. The truth is, I love you. Which is also including myself. I'm so sorry. I love you. Please forgive me doesn't mean that you might not. Please forgive me means, and so it is. Please forgive me to myself, to others, everybody involved in all the visions I just saw and the ones I didn't see. This life and any other life. Known and unknown wounds. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I love you. And although I say thank you, it doesn't end. Now I come out and it's Christmas Day. It's not too late. So we close with what vows can you make about your new life? How from all the lessons learned and the shifting inside our heart of forgiveness, where do I go from here? Make some sort of commitment to yourself and others on how you'll be different. You can still slip and make mistakes. In what way can you become not Scrooge, Ebenezer? Endearingly, Ebby, his sister would call him. What does that part of you do? The one that can't stop from smiling because you have a secret, a beautiful secret that you saw hell and came out of it and it's like, now I reach the light at the end of the tunnel. I can't give away enough to let people know how much I am the presence of love. So there was the spirit of my friend, Christmas past, present, and future, but there's another spirit, the presence of God now. It's not supposed to just end with the Christmas future. Now it's the Christmas spirit of God. Christmas, which means the mass, the celebration of Christ and the birth of Christ in me. I am the living Christ on earth. I am vowing and I'll try to get it in my journal to remind me every day. I'll put it on a sticker to put on my bathroom mirror when I go through there and see that I am the living Christ. I am here to make a difference. Merry Christmas to everyone. Peace and goodwill to mankind. I'm not here to argue politics, science, or religion. I'm here to be the presence of God. And the presence of God is the presence of love. How can I be loving today? How can I serve you today? We don't literally say it to everybody. It's in our minds. It's in our hearts. How can I serve? Because I'm so full. And there are days when I'm not. So I need to serve Myself, warm baths, comfort, favorite little drink, and so on. You know, like your hot chocolates or whatever it happens to be, tea. Just something to warm your insides. But taking care of self. Saying no to addictions. Yeah. If you're going to have any addiction, let it be one called being good. And then the other ones will tend to fall away because I'm so joyfully focused on being wonderful, which means full of wonder. Make a difference as best you can. Make this the new normal. Make this your, your healthy new habit, for lack of a better word. This is my new self. At the end of every day, I should be able to count on more than one finger even, I should be able to count, did I bless anyone today? Did I improve anybody's life today? 
And when you get used to being able to count on more than one hand, that's really cool. Two hands. When you have to start counting on your toes, you've done really well. This is my new life. Right? All else, bah humbug. My new normal is to be the presence of God. However, I can do that. And remember, when you're not in the mood to, please bring it to yourself. You deserve it. So that you can fill up again all your reserves so you can go out to the world and do the work again. Take a moment, just deep gratitude, a couple of breaths, a few breaths of, yes, I believe this. Yes, I got it. I may not have even liked the images of people from the past that came up. What does that matter? I've already surrendered them to a new level, learned what I could from that, and said, I love you, bless you, bye-bye. Focus on where you're going as a new person, not where you've been. There'll be plenty of time to have to still go back and do some of the healing on where you've been. Right now, it's Christmas. God bless us, everyone. And so it is. Thank you all so much. Take a moment to reintegrate, and we're going to do our closing song. Happy holidays to you. Let the holidays last through New Year's for sure. My Christmas tree and lights will be on for like a month. Yeah, they will. I mean, that's me. I mean, just like milk it, you know. All those beautiful lights, let them shimmer in your, you know, your rooftop, wherever you have them, or your Christmas tree. And you know what? If, if you want a, a, and don't, can't afford one strand of lights that you could put around your fireplace, come to Unity and, you know, tell Joan to buy you some lights. No, um, <laughs> we've got some spare lights, white or color. Take one as a gift. But don't believe you don't have and can't get and so on. That's not the real you. Find that real you. Ask for help. One day you'll have asked and received so much you'll afford to be able to be one of the ones giving to other people asking. Okay? Whether that's as a sponsor in a program or whether it's as a counselor, a chaplain, or just a great human being. Those are miracle workers. The world is grumpy. I said, think about this. And I said, this has never been a conscious decision. The world is complaining about, oh, we've got to have diversity and we've got to have inclusiveness, on and on and on. I said, look at us. We have, what, what four or five employees? One's African-American. We have a few team leaders, gay or straight. Our patron saints, we jokingly say, are earth, wind, and fire. We never said we have to. The world does not need to tell me how to be inclusive. By you preaching it means you're already not doing it. We were, we've were we been doing this for 10 years. We never selected somebody. We didn't need there to be men or women and a certain number. No, there's no institution on this planet that's going to tell me what I need to do. It was already there by grace of God. Have who we include, it's just light to me. It was never, we need one of them and one of them, and three of them and five. Never. And I cannot think like that. The world wants to preach that because the world lacks it. That's when we say talking is compensatory for not being. So I, I appreciate you and I, all of these people online, you and I, we have created this and it's already perfect. It already has the things that the world's struggling to find, including people that can pitch in and help and we all support financially the best we can and keep this going. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We then decide, are we going to take it to another level in this coming year? I'm here, you know. If the vote is yes, I'm here. If the vote is no, I'm not here. I'll just be wherever I need to be. But Whatever we decide to create, 
I will participate in. If it's inspired from God and we co-create it with God, I'm totally here. So thank you guys for co-creating this. Every single one of you, even if this is your first time attending, watching, I do not believe that that's happenstance. You're watching, you're already a part of it. You don't like it, great. Then you won't be a part of it next week. You know, you'll move on and do something else and that's great. But whatever you move on to find, do your best that it be God to your understanding. So I do deeply appreciate you and I, all of you and, and what we've co-created, so thank you. We're going to do our closing prayer. If you don't mind, you're welcome to stand, but you don't have to. couple of breaths, absorbing gratitude. Absorbing gratitude. So much this year we're grateful for. So much. I know people have struggled in this and that. I'm not grateful for people struggling, but I am grateful for what we can learn from it. Just extract the good. Extract the good. Just like a plant does with soil. It extracts the nutrients. The plant is more enlightened than most human beings because it knows how to simply only pull in that which is valuable to it. Feel that. Welcome that into your being. Mm. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we go, wherever we are, God is, I am, we are, and so it is. An extra moment, please, just breathe in that that's the truth. No matter what this world would try to tell us to the contrary. This that we've just said is the truth of God. And I'm grateful that I have this in my life. And Heavenly Father, Mother God, draw us into a place of having holy relationships. And before I launch into the world and try to have them with more challenging people and so on, I'm committing right here to this group online and present in the room. Even somebody watching this years from now, the same. We're all inviting each other to hold in our hearts a holy relationship. It just means that I am willing to see, to find and see and own that in you is the Christ. My holy brother, sister. Even when my head says something to the contrary, I know and I'm willing to hold the vision, no matter what this world tells me, these people that I'm experiencing with right now are holy children of God, my holy brothers and sisters. And in that, I now have hundreds of holy relationships. Every one of those brings miracles beyond measure. And I have hundreds instantaneously. So I'm on my way to a better life. All I need to do is my best to adhere to this belief. And so it is. So it is.